I sanded the entire blade to 220 grit and then painted it with white rust-oleum spray paint and primer. After the paint dried I drew the dragon scales and my image of the Targaryen dragon, Caraxes, the bloodworm, onto the blade using a soft lead pencil. First I removed the resist from around the dragon for the initial etch. After removing the blade from the acid you can see the dark steel around the dragon's head, which was the first bite into the steel. Preparing for the next etch I remove the resist from the outline of all of the scales on the dragon's neck. I want the outline of the scales to be darker than the rest of the dragon. Here the resist has been removed from around the dragon's neck scales. With the next etch complete, you can see the darkened outline of the dragon's neck scales. Now I am removing the resist from the neck spikes, eye, and nostrils. I want these darker and further recessed than much of the rest of the dragon. I am also removing the resist from the inside of each of the individual scales that cover the top third of the blade. This will eventually give these scales a three-dimensional look. The process of attending to each individual scale in this fashion proved to be very time-consuming, taking over five hours to complete. You will notice the red nail polish I added below the bottommost scales on the blade. This was done to protect from any unintended etching. In the future I would completely paint the bottom of the entire blade even though it was not intended to be etched with an image. These next images show the before and after effects of etching the inside of all of the dragon scales that cover the top third of the blade. Now I am removing the resist from all of the back of the dragon's neck. Additionally, I am removing it from all the rest of the facial feature lines. This is done to increase the shadows and enhance the three-dimensional effect. After etching out the back of the dragon's neck I prepare for the next etch by removing the resist from the neck frill, the front of the neck, and the top row of head spikes and back horn. Continuing to work towards a very realistic three-dimensional look. At his point I also remove the resist from the front of each of the blade scales. This was done using acetone on q-tips to avoid so much paint scraping. Using acetone to remove the resist from the bottom of the blade scales required great care, as you don't want to remove any unintended resist. In these images all of the upper blade etching is complete. We now get our first close-up look at how the etching process progressed. With all of the image etching finished we can now remove all remaining resist using acetone. Now I must quickly etch the bottom portion of the blade to achieve a consistent look from the top of the blade to the tip. Note the use of nail polish where the scales meet the bottom of the blade. At this step I could not allow any further etching on the scales. With the blade fully etched I now need to cold blue the entire blade to enhance the shadows and details. I apply the bluing agent with q-tips and allow it to work for about one minute before neutralizing it with baking soda and water. The final step is to wet sand the entire blade with 2000 grit sandpaper. How hard and long you sand is a matter of preference. The deepest portions of your etching will always remain the darkest creating amazing shadows and lifelike effects. The etching on the blade is now complete. This portion of the build took a little over a week. I will now move on to making the hilt furniture. 
the guard, spacers, and pommel will be crafted from solid brass. I will carve the handle from African blackwood. The following picture is a drawing of how I intend the hilt furniture to look. We'll now begin work on the guard, which I am cutting out of a half-inch thick piece of brass. I will grind in the basic shape to the guard before I fit it to the tang of the sword. The process of getting a good fit for the guard is one of the most time-consuming parts of making the hilt furniture. Drilling perfectly aligned holes is the most important part of starting this process. Hand filing the slot for the tang is done very slowly with multiple fittings to the sword. It is not unusual for this process to take hours. You want a really tight fit for the guard on the tang, which is why I use this makeshift tool to set the brass guard onto the tang towards the end of the fitting. Once I am satisfying with the rough fit I finish the shaping of the guard. I will return to fitting the guard after this step to work on setting the very top of the entire blade width into the guard. I use a Dremel with fine carving tips to create a channel where the width of the blade will recess about a sixteenth to an eighth inch into the guard. In these images you can see the completion of a good fit for the guard. With the painstaking fitting of the guard complete I can now finish shaping the guard. Next I move on to creating the first brass spacer. The spacer does not need to fit as tightly on the tang as the guard since it will be connected with steel alignment pins. The process of getting perfect alignment for interior pins that do not go all the way through the spacer, involves first attaching a scrap spacer onto the guard with super glue and drilling alignment holes all the way through the scrap spacer and into the guard. Next the scrap spacer is removed from the guard and super glued to the actual spacer so the alignment holes in the scrap spacer can be used to drill perfect alignment holes into the actual spacer. Then I remove the scrap spacer and discard it. I now have holes for my alignment pins that match perfectly between the guard and the spacer. Next I roughed out the other five pieces of the hilt furniture. Fitting the handle pieces and spacers to the tang and threading the pommel. Now alignment pins must be added to the rest of the pieces of the hilt furniture to assure all seven pieces fit together the same way every time they are assembled. The process of installing alignment pins from the spacer to the first part of the handle is familiar to the previous alignment pin installation since these pins also do not go all the way through the spacer. This involves using a scrap spacer once again that will be discarded at the end of the process.
all of the pieces of the handle assembly now have steel lineup pins in place. Next I will begin to carve the individual pieces of the hilt furniture, beginning with the bottom section of the handle. This piece is being formed from African blackwood. The upper handle spacer from brass. The upper portion of the handle from African blackwood. The mid handle spacer was made from brass. The most challenging portion of the handle build was forming the brass pommel which will hold together the entire takedown construction of the hilt. The final steps in the build are to first find sand and polish all the pieces of the hilt. Next I need to paint the brass pieces of the hilt white in preparation for etching in my desired pattern. I will pick up this video with the preparations for etching. First I paint the pommel and the guard with white spray paint to act as resist during the etching. Next I scratch off the resist from the inside of the dragon's wings on the guard. I also draw in the dragon's eye on the center of the guard. Here is a look at the guard before I place it into the ferric chloride etch. As well as the guard after etching and an initial application of patina. I employ the same technique to prepare the pommel for etching. The pommel fully prepared to etch. Here is the pommel after etching and application of a patina. The finished product. My version of Dark Sister from House of the Dragon. The hand etched blade is 5160 spring steel with a full tang. The hilt furniture is solid brass and African blackwood with internal lineup pins used throughout. I threaded the end of the tang and tapped the pommel to complete the takedown design. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video please subscribe.